What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how you can make Minecraft look absolutely amazing. I'll be showing you how to set up shader packs as well as distant horizons to take your game from looking like this to this and finally to this. Minecraft is definitely one of the games that should be on your radar in 2024. Now, just a quick note, this video will show you how to install Distant Horizons and a shader pack, but at the time of creating this video, there's only a handful of shader packs that support this, and you can find more information on the Iris Discord linked in the description down below. Unfortunately, Iris is a fabric-only mod, so you won't be able to use Forge as well as other things that come along with it. However, there's definitely no performance loss, as playing with Fabric and a couple of performance mods is probably going to give you better performance than even playing with Optifine on Forge. There's just a few mods that may not be compatible or have versions that work with Fabric. Let's get straight into the installation and get in game as soon as possible. First of all, we need to download Iris from the Iris developers website. You can download it through Modrinth or CurseForge as well as Distant Horizons, but you'll get an outdated version, at least at the time of creating this. You can only get the latest cutting edge version that works absolutely wonderfully by using the Iris downloader. First of all, in the description down below, head across to the irisshaders.com Dev website. Here in the download section, you'll find download universal job. Click this and then open it when it's done downloading. As long as you have Java installed, it should open as such. If you don't already have Java installed, you'll find a link to the installer in the description down below. Once it opens up, all you need to do is select a game version. The latest you can choose is 1.20.4. Tick Use Distant Horizons Beta. Choose Iris Plus Fabric. Leave the installation directory as .minecraft unless you specifically installed Minecraft somewhere else. Then just click Install. If you get a pop-up about mods found already, click Yes. And when it's done, you'll be able to close out of the Iris installer, open up the Minecraft launcher, and in the drop-down list over here, you should now see Fabric Loader 1.20.4 if you chose to install Fabric as well. Otherwise, it'll show as Iris something or other. I'll choose 1.20.4. Then on the Installations tab, we'll find it again here. Click the three dots next to it, Edit, and we'll expand more options where we can now give the game more RAM. By default, Minecraft is limited to two gigabytes, but if we give it more RAM, it'll perform much better. If I open up my task manager with Control Shift and Escape, performance followed by memory, you'll see that I'm using 30 of my 128 gigs of RAM. Of course, you'll probably be using four of your eight, four of your 16, etc. Of the available remaining RAM, you can give Minecraft, let's say 70% of it. If you have six gigs, give the game maybe four gigs, so I'll change it from two to four in that case. In my case, I have a ton of RAM available, so I'll give it 16 gigs just for the best performance. I'll save and fire up Fabric Loader 1.20.4 with the Distant Horizons mod installed. If we head across to percentage, app data percentage, or see users, your username, app data roaming, dot Minecraft mods, in here you'll see that the Iris installer dropped us five different mods, Distant Horizons, Fabric API, Indium, Iris, and Sodium. All of these mods here work together to make Distant Horizons work in this brand new alpha slash developer version that the Distant Horizon developer and Iris developers are working on. These versions can't be downloaded from Modrinth or CurseForge. They need to be downloaded through the separate launcher, which I showed you in the beginning, at least at the time of recording this. In the future, when it's publicly released, fully developed, and of course, bug fixed, the installation process may be slightly different. But for now, we've launched into the game, and if we head into options, you'll see a brand new option here, which is the Distant Horizons mod. We can choose to disable it if you'd like to see the difference, quality preset, which we can adjust depending on your graphics card. If you set this down to lower, it'll use less VRAM, meaning it can run on lesser GPUs. Then CPU load. If you set this up to aggressive, it'll load the surrounding environment really quickly and use tons of your CPU, which should help you load the world quicker. But of course, you'll need a more powerful system for this. I've set this to aggressive from the default of balanced. You can even set this up one more step to get the world to generate super quickly. I'll click done, done again, and we'll head into a single player world, create new world, and we'll set it to creative. Not that it really matters. Once you load in, you'll notice that you get a message about Distant Horizons loading in a developmental version. And of course, when you load in, the world won't really look like this. In fact, I've already flown around and waited for the world to generate, so this loaded in super quickly. For you, you'll find that your CPU is pushed all the way up to the max, 
such as pulling across my task manager. You can see it's absolutely pinned while it's generating thousands of different chunks in our surrounding area and preparing them to work with distant horizons. Essentially, if I turn off distant horizons, so options, distant horizons, false, you'll see the crazy difference that this mod makes. This is default Minecraft. I'm sitting at around 105-ish FPS, and this is the distance that I can see, a total of 12 chunks away from me. However, if we enable the Distant Horizons mod, you'll see that my FPS hasn't actually changed at all, and now we see into a crazy amount of distance. This is absolutely stunning. The Distant Horizon mod developer has been asked about shaders since the creation of the mod. Now they're working with the Iris developers directly to get shader packs working practically seamlessly. And bam, now we have the Bliss shaders installed and this is what Minecraft looks like. It's absolutely fabulous. This has taken the game from just a simple block game in a small surrounding area to the entire world. This is honestly breathtaking. If you'd like to install shaders as well, hit escape, options, video settings, then shader packs at the very top and click open shader pack folder. Then inside of this folder, we'll be dropping different zips that we can download off the internet. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Bliss shader, which you can simply download and drop in here. Then in this menu, select it and click apply. Apply. That's it. Your game will probably freeze for a few seconds while it thinks about things, and eventually it should just work. With Bliss in particular, you'll get a message on your screen that'll fade in a few seconds, saying it's not compatible with Distant Horizons. Don't worry, a lot of shader packs are actually compatible, and Bliss does a fantastic job. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Shrimple shader pack as well, which looks pretty good, but I'll be sticking to Bliss. Oh, and by the way, there's the error I'm speaking about. It'll fade in a few seconds. If we were to try and use, say, Sildes instead, you'll see that Distant Horizons just disables itself. That's infinitely better than trying to use it with a previous version, where you'll see really weird things happening in the distance. It's super pretty, and I definitely recommend giving this mod a look as, well, this is no shaders, and this is no Distant Horizons. Yeah. Now, if you throw a texture pack on it, this game can look even better. This is Minecraft in 2024. It's absolutely stunning. And that's it. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.